Hello everyone, welcome back to our fourth part of this visualization step-by-step -step series. Today we'll be covering how to make cards and table on Flourish. Now, um, as usual, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments box. I will get it um, answered as soon as I can or at the end of the session. Today, we can really take our time uh, because this is very simple. Uh, in case you don't know, uh, Flourish actually has um, certain features that are pretty cool, which is called Cards and Table. It makes very simple tables uh, and sacred cards look very attractive and interesting. So these are just the introductory slides to what GNI does. And of course, as usual, you can always visit this website to pick up any online course that is of interest to you. Now, of course, I should also mention again, as I did with other, uh, other parts in the previous uh, sessions, is that if you have a newsroom request or a um, journalism uh, association, you know, a group training request, please do not hesitate to reach out to myself or to the email newslabsupport at google.com with your request and we'll try to attend to it as soon as possible for a private training session. Now, today we'll cover Flourish Cards and Flourish Table. I think you pretty much know uh, by now how Flourish looks like. If I assume that all of you have already set up an account. If you haven't yet, if you missed the previous sessions, please do go to this website to just register a free account. It's really fast. Um, you don't have to pay any money. In fact, if you you can even unlock the premium account if you are submitting a request as a newsroom. So most newsrooms in Asia, I believe, already have um, an account. Uh, but if your newsroom doesn't have it yet, well, then it's time to you know head on to the Flourish website. Scroll all the way to the bottom. There is a um, request uh, application for newsroom access. Now, the difference between the free and the um, premium account uh, or basically for Flourish is that the um, premium account allows you to lock and private your visualization. So whatever that I publish right now because my account is free, therefore it is searchable on Google and can be viewed, publicly viewed. Now, uh, the premium account also allows you to upload your data from Google Sheets directly. Uh, right now, if you're using a free account, you would have to upload the XLS or the CSV file from your hard drive. Okay, so today, first things first, we'll look at cards, right? So what can what does what is cards on Flourish? You know, basically they have three types uh, of designs. One is the carousel, one is the grid, and one is the profiles. Now the carousel, as you can see here, is basically this. Uh, it's you can auto scroll or you can scroll it manually, and it shows a brief uh, description of a type of like say political party, company, or even like football players, you know, sports players, sports teams, or even a place or feature spot that you want a uh, feature spot or tourist location that you want to promote, or even like in you know, a local flea markets, historical places within a city. So, uh, or even political candidates, you know, contesting in a par uh, in a party election or a national election. So it's a very versatile tool um, because basically you can use cards to describe anything. It's basically just as a prettier version to give you a brief overview of um, a team or a person, right, or a location. So again, this is the carousel with filter. With filter meaning that you can just then you know select and deselect the options, and then it'll narrow down the cards. And then grid does the same thing as well. It's not the scrolly one; it's just static, but it allows you to also do the same thing to filter it. Profiles. It's basically the same as um, version of grid, only that it has more text, as you can see at the bottom here. And so now we'll try to go into this practice session uh, where I, I basically, this is a sample I made. It's not the prettiest because I put this together in like 20 minutes. Uh, of course, you can modify it, you know, by making the colors look more attractive, or maybe you want to find better logos. Um, and, you know, you can change the color or even like each category, right? So again, what we, need, what we needed to do in the first place for this is that we had to first um, basically compile all, all of these information 
uh, before you can, you know, uh, create this. So what I did was I put together uh, a series of there, I'm showing it right now. I'm putting in together all those different political parties um, that were contesting in the Bihar state uh, state election. And then I also put in, um, well, I started asking myself, you know, what information that I want, right? Basically political parties that are contesting, then I would probably want, you know, to denote and categorize them uh, since I can use the filter function by the coalition they're tied to. And then I also maybe want to put in information in my card to just show the leader of the political party and the number of seats they're contesting in the Bihar state election. Now, so um, what did I then, oh, oh, I still need their logo. So then I started looking for, you know, free images of their um, party logo. And then after that, so I compiled all of this together into my own sheet. And then I copied and pasted into my uh, data. Wait, let me pull this bigger so it's easier to see. Um, if you want to just do this from scratch, let's just let's just try doing this from scratch. New visualization. I would go to cards all the way down, and there's the carousel. I select this, and by default, they will, as usual, you know, um, flourish. will already have a template for you. So you just go to data and then you just replace it with um, your, the table that you have, which is the party, logo, all of this. Just I just copy this and then I just replaced it, right? Uh, so go there. And then I just have to make sure that all of these are correct, um, the columns. So like, a is um, the title, uh, looks right. And then B is the image, looks also right. Um, then C is the categories, which is the filter. So it's um, the coalition. And then there's a subtitle. I will put in me the political party leader. And then the text, I will maybe put in the coalition name and also the contested seats. So looks fine. If I have audio, I can even insert audio, but I don't. So I'm just gonna go into preview. Now it looks like this because it's by like you know default. Let me just go to no theme. Um, so it's not the color that I want. Um, so then I have to start changing the color. So I could change the channel color and the bar color first. Maybe I want to do that. Uh, so or the bar color make it lighter. Maybe not. You know, I can talk. I can toggle around and play with this. So it looks like okay. If I were to do this, uh, okay, maybe this is how it looks like. Okay, so I could do this, and then um, next I want to do is I want to change this because I don't like the colors here. Uh, I could even do autoplay so that it'll auto scroll, and I could even set the time duration for the autoplay. And I can even show the play button. Now, cards. Okay, now here I can actually adjust how I want the layout to be. Right now, it's overlaid on the image. So I could do, choose, say, if I choose portrait. Oh, sorry. It looks like it's um, not quite sure what, why it's doing this. Let me just refresh. Okay, but it looks fine over here. So I suspect that, you know, it should be fine. Uh, it looks fine in this preview, but it doesn't look okay here. So never mind that. Uh, we can just go into, say, for example, if we want a um, title on the image or even image below text, we can adjust all of this. You know, maybe I will use the one that I already did because this one is still, I'm not sure why it's doing that. Now it's also affecting this one as well. Uh, okay. I suspect there's something wrong with the application right now. Never mind. Um, so what I can do is just ignore that. Okay. Uh, so for example, if I do like a portrait, 
uh, and I could do like a image above text. And then so I don't have the overlay. And then after that, um, I could also then change the colors. Right now it's a very dull palette, right? So, uh, no, it's not stopping, it's still blinking. So what I can what I can do is that I can just select um, maybe a different color and I could even do a custom override if I want to. So if I do a custom override, then I would only have selected colors that I want. And remember how we did custom override uh, in the last session, we actually just uh, edit color palette and then just delete all the colors that we don't want and then copy the codes that we want and just put it into the um, overlay here. And we can check on the legend, the layout uh, right now. Let's see. Okay, now it's fine. It's very strange. Um, okay, so um, check on, okay, so yeah, then we can adjust the, the font size, I mean the font type and the font color. So all of these, and you can even have a footer where you could just put the source. Maybe in this case, you could just put the election function of India. And then you could also put in the URL, which um, we mentioned the last time. I think it was ECI something. Yeah, I can't remember. Um, but yes, so you can put all of this. Uh, And there you go. And you can even put a link. And then after that, you can even adjust the color, I think, on this, um, on the image itself. Um, view mode. Styling, let's see, image, yes. There, uh, image sizing, you can choose fill or fit. And then after that, you could even um, choose the uh, opacity. So if just say I put fill, I put the, uh, right now the blend mode is overlay. Let's see, I put normal uh, or darken screen. No, it doesn't look great. Uh, just put black and white. You could even adjust the opacity. There you go. Contrast brightness. Um, so I, oh, wait, hang on, let me see. I have one party which I could not find the logo. It looks like they don't have a logo. So I could just do like this, or I could just I put it as missing images as height, or I could put icon and they just put, add a random icon. So yeah, I can do all of this. Uh, and adjust this and if I'm okay with it, I'm okay with this. I just need to click on um, export and then publish share and embed. And then as usual, we would copy the iframe and then we will go into code pen and then we'll test it out. Let's see. Yeah, and then we can even like try out by taking out uh, this coalition, or I can even like, you know, take out this coalition. And then, just, uh, oh, there you go. Even take out two, and then there's only this and this left. So, yeah, pretty much this is how it is. It's very simple and easy to do um, cards. Not that, not that complicated. All right, so next thing uh, we'll try out is, uh, oh, here's an example that I wanted to show you of like one um, local uh, media outlet that they did um, using uh, cards carousel style. And this is uh, just to show they divided uh, the, the categories of uh, basically um, perks that you know the country's budget was providing, right, um, in their budget announcement. 
Well, I would say that, you know, this is a pretty good, like, debrief to just sort of, like, just give people an idea what they'll be getting. Uh, but what I would have done with this is that I would have made sure that each category was of a different color so that I know that those are not the same because right now the colors are pretty similar. So uh, it doesn't actually stand out that it's a different category from each other. Right, and this is a sample. Uh, please ignore the information here. I just randomly put it together. Um, it's a sample of like, what, what, what else can you do, right, with cards? So, and then I thought of like, okay, with um, profiles, uh, because it's supposed to have more text, right? Uh, I figured what you could probably do is you could probably make a sample of um, vaccine types. So I just did a few. I'm, I'm, of course, there are way more vaccines that are in progress right now than the ones that I put here, right? And this was just, you know, I just put in, you know, like, few of the vaccines that are pretty popular and then I just put source um, and then I just figured, okay, perhaps what I should also do is that, let's go to the data so I could show you what I should put in. So I, what I decided to put in was, you know, okay, the vaccine name, the image of the vaccine and category, what should I put for category, right? So then I realized that, okay, all these vaccines are like, um, created based on like different types of like, you know, denominators of virus, right? So then there's the mRNA, there's adenovirus inactivated, right? So this could be a good way to categorize them. So then I figured out, okay, description, I just pulled together whatever that, you know, please ignore the information here. I just decided to put some text here that are longer than usual, just to see how much it fits. And I also decided, okay, people probably want to know the efficacy rate. So I just put together this, um, something within like, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. So if you have all the resources already available to you, especially if um, the information is provided by the government in like a so-called like templated like information on the kind of vaccine that they're importing into the country and uh, what are the basic information of each type of vaccine they're importing. So then that could also be like your base information to just put into your um, profiles card so um, as usual, I make sure that all of these columns are properly uh, checked. They are the correct ones that, you know, the title is A, uh, column, uh, column A, images in column B, categories in column C, and what are the subtitles that in text that I want in. And yes, again, these are also filtered. So I think by now, if you were to include all of the vaccines, which I think that they are like, about a dozen or so by now. So then you will have way more cards on this list. Um, and of course, then you can also uh, adjust colors. Same thing. Um, so the thing about uh, cards is that you can choose when you select cards, even though if you select a carousel, it just goes by default into carousel, but you can always switch it to grid. Like right now I went into grid mode when I selected the template but I can always change it to carousel and you can see it still fits. So you can even play around to see how many words you can try to fit in into the card if it's on carousel mode, um, as opposed to when it's on grid mode. Right, and this is another sample that was done by a uh, paper called the Boston Globe. Um, so they use the Flourish Cards template, but they did the static one, which is basically the grid version, um, to just show what's the timeline for the COVID-19 vaccination in the state. And this is another um, uh, method of using cards. So it's basically just, um, you know, like, it's not carousel. Uh, it's, I just made it into a GIF by scrolling down myself because carousel is goes left and right. So this, what they did with this is that it's by a uh, Indonesian newspaper. So they created cards uh, with image overlay and they highlighted all the different timeline, um, important dates throughout the whole um, omnibus law passing. Now we will move on to the next one, which is the flourish table. Uh, so, I mean, we all use table um, 
in our media organization, right? Be it print, you know, or even on web, we like our tables. Uh, but sometimes we find that the tables can be pretty boring. So how would you want to make your table look more interesting, right? So um, one way is to go to Flourish Table. It's like the fancier version of Sheets. Um, and you have the default design, and you have the bingo card, and you have the searchable database. Um, today, I think uh, we'll look into searchable database because that essentially will cover uh, most of what most newsrooms would use if they ever want to use the table. And five situations that Flourish provided as a guideline, which uh, I would also copy the link here because I think it's a very, very great guideline, and they also have amazing tutorial on Flourish website. So uh, it's basically uh, five scenarios that you can use a table, right? Um, when you need to show individual precise values and you have a lot, just say a lot. Okay, usually you publish in print in a table, maybe you have like 10 rows. But what if you have in this case, the example that Flourish gave was the worldwide university ranking, which they had like 100 universities on a list. So then you want to show individual precise values. You could easily then extract it out right, from the 100 list, but still have the 100 universities in the table itself. And you also probably want to compare the different data sets. You know, in this case, they had the three different rankings to be uh, so that you can, they can compare, which is um, the, by the Times Higher Education, QS, and also Center for World University Rankings. And then you can even show detailed and summary data uh, which is, you know, like, you know, you can show like the number of students, students per staff. And then when there are different parameters of measurement, like such as the female to male ratio in this case, and in this case is when you have a lot of categorical data, which you can see here, there are a lot of columns. Um, so it looks prettier than your static uh, print table. And it also allows you to have way more information in the table. So this is a sample that I made, right? So I decided, why not let's do one just to show you guys how we got it done. Uh, so I got this data from uh, the World Happiness Report. Uh, it's basically a ranking of the world happiest countries. Now, when I downloaded the data, they had a lot of parameters of measurement. So what I did was I only took the measurements that I thought were important to say uh, the people, you know, what people want to know. First off, obviously, they want to know the rank of the country, right? And perhaps they might want to know what a region is. So you can divide even like by regional uh, indicators when you use up in your searchable um, database. Then you can look at within countries within the same region, how do they fare? And perhaps you also want to look at what is their score, right? And basically, uh, we saw the highest score got rank one, right? And besides that, you know, maybe you would think that, oh, the score maybe has something to do with the GDP per capita in the country, or even the kind of amount of like social support that they get. Um, and also maybe it relates to the life, expense, life expectancy or the freedom to make choices, all of this. So I just, basically I will open this up and I'll show you guys what I did. Um, hang on, let me just, there. So I, kept these data, um, you know, to make life choices and perceptions of corruption. But of course, it's up to you, right? I mean, this is just an example. Uh, so because when I downloaded the CSV file, I had a lot of columns. I knew I knew that, you know, it was way too much information for, like, say, a reader to process. So I just wanted to remove some of the columns. So it's up to you as an auditory judgment what you think that you want to include into your table. So then, um, I did this and I copied and pasted. So basically what I had was uh, here, you will see, yes, this is the original uh, CSV file, which I copied into my sheet. I had like even the standard error score and the upper and lower risker. And then I even have like, they even measured the generosity of the people. Um, and they also have like, see a lot like, uh, letter score in dystopia uh, explained by lock for gdp explained by uh social support explained by health life expectancy all of this right so i was like okay that's like a lot a lot of columns my reader probably don't want to know most of it so i decided i decided on the columns that i thought that 
I would want my readers to read and then I just narrow it down and then I just put it into this uh, uh, table data a uh, table um, within flourish so then after I did all of this then I would naturally like okay be able to preview so what I did was I can even adjust the minimum width of my table I mean if I want I can change it to 200 so it's like I'm short um, Maybe, oh, uh, maybe even 100. Yeah. So, um, and then uh, I enabled sorting, so which, um, and I also enabled pagination, and then I uh, allowed the number of rows to be like 30. Maybe I want to put in more. It's, it's up to you. You want to reduce it, so it's so fine. So, right now, I have six pages, as you can see. Uh, and then I have 30 rows per page. Okay, and the number of rows after searching will also be 30. So then I also selected the background. So uh, I wanted some contrast because originally the table by default is entirely shaded in gray. It's just different, uh, it's just gray basically. So I wanted different shades. So I just changed the color. And I can even adjust the height of the cell. If I want it to be shorter, I can do this. Go um, wrap text in cell, or maybe not. Uh, yeah, so you can do all of this. And then after that, you can adjust the thickness of the border. And next thing I did was, OK, you could have this. You can enable this if you have a chart within a chart, which is what you saw in um, Scroll back. So you saw how in the worldwide university rankings they have a female to male ratio, and this is actually a chart within a table, right? And this is where the function comes in, uh, which columns that you want to turn into a bar chart. So and I have put it enabled. So for example, in my data, if I have a ratio, say uh, my last two rows are uh, my last two columns are a ratio of something, I could actually have that inserted here. Uh, and once I have that, and I could re rename that column, and then that would appear as, um, say, it would appear as the header here with the uh, bar chart. And let's see, if I don't want a bar chart, I want a line chart, I can just do the same as well. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I think these are like full data. Yeah, so um, pretty much that's it. Uh, I could even show you, wait, I think, uh, what else is there? Colors, um, yes, mobile view, mobile view, blocks. So, yeah, and I had a footer as well, just to cite the source name with the URL. And then I made sure I had my header as well. Yeah, so that's pretty much that. And then I make sure that I click export and publish. And as usual, if I already make changes, I publish and make changes, I need to click on republish. And then I check on the iframe again. Um, just go to codepen.io and then I stick it in just to check my table. It's working. so. Let's see if I wanted to look for Singapore. There you go. The pull out just nice. I could even adjust by, um, so I could adjust by, I automatically adjust by a ranking, right? I could also go by the bottom to top. I could also divide or uh, arrange it by regional indicator. So now I'm seeing all Central and Eastern Europe countries, um, right? So all of this, uh, basically, you can actually do that. It's pretty interesting. So like, if you do this, okay, you will see by alphabetical order, you will see the Central and Eastern Europe countries first, and the Commonwealth of Independent States, and then East Asia. And then you could even adjust by ladder score, which I think would be the same as the rank. You could even lock it by per capita, or by all of this, in perceptions of corruption. Right. And so uh, 
one way for you, you could also do like search, if you want to search by region, you could also search by East Asia or there it goes. It also comes up Southeast Asia. So maybe I should look for Southeast Asia. Let's see what I have. Um, there, then I will get all the rankings for Southeast Asian countries. And I could just make a story, uh, write out my story after this by pulling the data. It makes it much more easier to understand and consume the information. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to just drop it in the comments box. Okay, so for more tutorials by Flourish, please check out these pages. Um, there is the Flourish YouTube page, and there is also the Flourish blog. I will copy and stick the link in the comments box as well. Um, so I find that the Flourish YouTube uh, page is very, very helpful with their tutorials on the different um, visualizations that they have on their site. And of course, if you want more like detailed and comprehensive uh, guide, then their blogs is also very good because they provide step-by-step -step guide as well on their blogs. Uh, on their blog. And then after that, uh, there is also this other link, which I thought was very useful, is that they constantly update their templates uh, on Flourish. So whenever they do, they would always publish it out and inform um, their users. And it will you will find it in the site called, uh, under the tab called What's New. Now, we've talked a lot about Flourish, right? And we've actually reached towards the end of the session. So right now, I just wanted to tell you that you don't actually have to use Flourish. The only reason why we recommend Flourish um, is because one, it's free. Two, is because we know we can get your newsroom access if you don't have newsroom access, right? Um, but if you find that you don't want to use Flourish and you prefer to use other types of visualization out there, it's also uh, it's also fine, right? Um, and there are other visualizations out there which are also free for uh, for you to sign up and try out. It is similar to what Flourish does. Uh, probably the layouts are a bit different and the templates might look a little different, but it's very pretty much the same. Um, and so you can see here, this is one example, which is a data wrapper. Uh, so a local media outlet in India actually did this uh, COVID-19 discharge and depth chart uh, using data wrapper. And then there's also the, another one called uh, Everbits, and I highlighted it here, called everbits.com. Now, Everbits, I also found this. Uh, this was done by, uh, I think, another media outlet in um, EU. Uh, no, it's actually in the US. So they were tracking the number of um, applicants uh, from EU for uh, into the US universities. So then, uh, so the cool thing about this Everwitz uh, graph is that, you know, you could actually, besides, of course, the same thing as it does Flourish, you can actually scroll over and see the data. But when you click on Everwitz icon, you can actually see um, the more information about the data set itself, which I thought was pretty helpful. Like I can download it, but I can also see the table form of it. So have fun creating your own charts the cards and table. Uh, if you missed out um, the last session that we had last week, Friday, we actually talked about flourish charts. You talk about parliament chart, election results chart, horse race chart, line chart, bar chart, column chart. I uh, even thought you had to annotate the story, um, create a story, annotate your visualization um, on flourish as well. Well, while we think that, you know, visualization is amazing and you should make it pretty, also just remember this, do not OD on the graphics. Here's an example of basically what not to do by any media organization, which is to have just an entire site filled with graphs. Now, thank you so much, everyone. If you have any questions, please feel free to put it up in the comments right now. We'll, we have another few minutes left. So if uh, I will probably give it a minute or two to just wait for you to ask a question. In the meantime, if you have any questions at all, or like you know, you're a bit shy to ask right now, or you have a feedback that you want to send to us, please send your feedback on this feedback form. You can just um, QR code it uh, or just type in the bit.ly link uh, 
and just let us know uh, what you thought about this uh, workshop series. Or perhaps you find that you know this workshop series is not really quite up your alley and you have other things that you want to learn instead, uh, you can also provide in your feedback form because we are constantly striving to um, improve and provide the kind of training workshops that are catered and suited for your needs as a journalist or an editor. Now, um, if you don't have any questions, uh, we might just end it in a minute. Uh, so anyone has any questions? Uh, if not, then we will end the session a few minutes earlier than expected. Now, thank you so much for your time, everyone. So our last session for this visualization um, series is on Wednesday at the same time. Uh, we will be covering how to make custom maps uh, by using, uh, we will start off simple with just Google Sheets and then we'll move on to uh, maps and my maps. And then we'll talk a little bit about Flourish, which requires a little more complicated um, knowledge of having to adapt your GeoJSON file. But other than that, thank you so much for your time today. I'll see you again for the last um, workshop of the series on Wednesday. Take care and thank you. Bye.